Hello and happy Sabbath. Welcome to worship here today at the Piedmont Park Seventh-day Adventist Church. We're so glad that you have joined us, even if we are joining via the internet and computers and all sorts of technology. We're so glad that we can still meet, even in a time like this. So thank you so much for joining us for worship today. We pray that you will be blessed as we draw near to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we begin, would you bow your heads with me and pray? Our loving Heavenly Father, our gracious Lord Jesus, and powerful Holy Spirit, thank You so much that we can be in Your presence today. You are with us always, Lord. You have always promised to gather together wherever Your people are, no matter how we gather together, You are in our midst. And so thank You so much, Lord, for being here. We are seeking You. We are searching for You today. So reveal Yourself again. Help us to rediscover you. Show us, Lord, your love, your story, and your power today, and change us so that we may be more like you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Sometimes I still try to take control Cause I get scared when I can't see the end And all you want for me is to let go Your parting waters Making a way for me Your building
Today's offering is for the North American Division Women's Ministries, which was first established in 1898 at the urging of Ellen G. White. In the book Evangelism, we find her marching orders to the women of the church. The Lord has a work for women as well as for men. They may take their places in his work at this crisis, and he will work through them. If they are imbued with a sense of their duty and labor under the influence of the Holy Spirit, they will have just the self-possession required for this time. The Savior will reflect upon these self-sacrificing women the light of his countenance and will give them a power that exceeds that of men. They can do in families a work that men cannot do, a work that reaches the inner life, they can come close to the hearts of those whom men cannot reach. Their labor is needed. And this is from the Book of Evangelism, page 464. All across the North American division, from the United States to Canada and from Bermuda to Guam, Micronesia, the women of the church are engaged in serving others. They give Bible studies, hold evangelistic series, and minister to those in shelters for battered and homeless women. They provide for the needs of families seeking refuge on our shores, and they teach English as a second language, tutor children, and make bags of love for children who are displaced from their homes or their parents. The women of the church are making a significant difference in their communities and their congregations. I invite you to make a generous gift today to affirm their work in ministry. You can mail your tithe and offering to the church or go to AdventistGiving.org. If you choose to not tithe online, you can drive up to the church and find a box of tithe envelopes, fill those out and put that in the mailbox. Or if you rather us mail you tithe envelopes, please let us know. Let us pray. Dear God, please, Bless this offering and the tithe, Lord. We give it all to you. May you multiply it, Lord. May you bless the women as they minister. Bless all of us, Lord. And may you bring more children into your flock. We love you, Jesus. We pray this in your name. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. How are you today? I'm going to tell you a children's story. But first, I have a question. 
Do you like bubbles? I like bubbles. I like so many things about bubbles. What are some things that you like about bubbles? Do you like to spin around and have them float all around you? Do you like how they sometimes look like there's a rainbow shining on the bubble? Do you like reaching out your hand and trying to pop one? Do you like watching them wiggle and jiggle as they float through the air? Do you like how they sometimes sit on the grass and don't pop? Do you like to make a really gigantic bubble and then look through it? Wow, there are so many fun ways to enjoy bubbles. It's such a beautiful morning that I thought I would make some bubbles today. So I got this little bottle here that says it's bubble solution and I'm super excited. So let's open it up here and let's see. Inside there's this wand. Okay, all right, you ready to make some bubbles? Here we go. Oh, it's not making any bubbles. Is it broken? Hmm, let's, let's try again. Okay, maybe we'll have better luck. Oh, it's still not making any bubbles. I'm so disappointed. What's missing, you guys? What do I need to make bubbles? Oh, I need air, like this. There we go. Ah, you need air to make bubbles. You need to fill up the bubble solution with air. Did you know that our lungs are just like that? In order to breathe, we breathe air into our lungs and out of our lungs and into our lungs and out of our lungs. And that breath keeps us alive. And God is the one who put our breath in our body in the very beginning. When he created Adam and Eve, he breathed his own breath into their lungs and made them living human beings. It tells us this in the Bible. Let's read that verse. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 says, God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living person. Isn't that amazing? God loves you so much that he created you and gave life to you. Just like the bubbles are so much fun and so joyful, he wants us to be joyful and to share love and joy in the world. Maybe you can go blow some bubbles today and enjoy them. Happy Sabbath. At this time, I'd like to share with you a few announcements. A business meeting will be held at the church this Monday, August 10th at 7 p.m. Masks are required and we will be social distancing. We encourage you to be a part of this meeting as we make important plans for our church moving forward. Junior Sabbath School is meeting today at noon at Pioneers Park. A going away drive through will be held for me on August 22nd from 3 to 5 p.m here in the church parking lot. I would love for you to swing by to say goodbye. Lastly, we would like to encourage you to pray for all of our schools as they are starting. Check out our website and Facebook for more details about events going on at Piedmont Park. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below, a little silver and a little gold. But in that city where the ransom will shine, I want a gold one that silver lines. I've got a mansion just over 
problem too big, God cannot solve it. There is no mountain too tall, He cannot move it. There is no storm too dark, God cannot calm it. There is no sorrow too deep, He cannot soothe it. If He carried the weight of the world upon His shoulders, I know my brother Father God, we come today to listen to your word, to sing praises, and to worship you, expressing our gratitude and respect for you, as you did the disciples of old in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. You teach us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And so on this Sabbath day we pray, Our Father God in heaven, our joy and our holy hope, we worship you as our Creator, our Redeemer, our Restorer, and our Promise Keeper. We recognize that it is you who gives us breath and sustains our lives from day to day. We pray and hope that every day we will have in some small way helped you in bringing your ministry of reconciliation to the world. We pray that your kingdom will soon come in its fullness. We long to see you face to face in the new earth and the new heaven. God, we want to give you all of our love and our full commitment so that you can help us accomplish your blessed will. Please send the Holy Spirit to teach us. Thank you for giving us what we need from day to day, and we continue to ask for health, for good relationships, for shelter, for meaningful work. We pray for those who are ill, who are hungry, who are addicted, who are angry, who are in bad or painful situations, and for those who are in need. We pray that you will help us know how you would like us to help others and to help us put our prayers into holy action. Father, thank you for providing forgiveness through Jesus Christ. We pray that we will accept his gift of salvation breath by breath. We remember that you said, Your sins are forgiven. Go and sin no more. Because we know how good it is to be forgiven, we pray that we will be able to forgive by allowing you to be the one who decides what each person deserves. Please help us to overcome evil with good in our lives and to help others see how they can become more like you as well. Help us to act and speak life as you do. We ask your help to lead us away from the temptations that at times plague us. We welcome the Holy Spirit in our life to show us our spiritual need. We also ask that you protect us from the deceitful activities of Satan and his angels. We pray this prayer because we claim the promise that you have already won the victory over sin and death. And we believe, as you have said, that the kingdom is already yours. So to you, God, be the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Please come back soon. Good morning. Today's scripture reading is from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 21 and 22. For since by man came death, by man 
also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word. Hollywood loves to retell stories. It's called a, a reboot these days, telling a story again, but making it different. Trying, maybe they're trying to make more money with it. Maybe they're trying to make it better than it was before. And that's hard with some movies because the original is nearly perfect. But there are some old movies that are flawed, if we're honest. The concept of the movie was good, but the final result uh, left a little something to be desired. And so sometimes a movie or a movie franchise, a series of movies, will receive a reboot, starting over with, with a new actor. And friends, we find in the Bible a grand reboot in the story of Scripture, a reboot that vastly improves the original story. A reboot, a needed reboot with a much needed and better actor playing the central role, playing a once in a lifetime role. The director, of course, we would call God, who had a plan for the story and for the reboot all along. But the reboot needed a new actor to fulfill this all-important role. So this morning, let's learn about the reboot in the Bible. What do you say? I hope you got your Bibles with you. You can open them up and follow along. We'll also have the text up on the screen. Now, friends, we've all had things that have broken before, haven't we? Things that need fixing. Now, there are some things you can fix with glue or tape, they say duct tape can fix almost anything. Don't know exactly why it had to, this banana had to be fixed up on the wall, but apparently it did. But there are some things. There are some things that are hard to fix once broken. Things like promises, reputations, and relationships. They are hard to fix once broken. The story we find in the Old Testament is that something important has been broken. And Hosea tells us what was broken and who broke it. This wonderful little book, Hosea, I encourage you to read the whole story, but I want you to just come with me to Hosea chapter 6, starting in verse 6. This tells us what was broken. This is God speaking through the prophet Hosea. He says, For I desire mercy and not sacrifice. And the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. But like men, they transgressed the covenant and they dealt treacherously with me. Here we find that a covenant was broken between God and humans. And that means all humans, friends. So what did this covenant involve? Well, here's where Hosea helps us so much. Was the covenant just about sacrificing animals? No, friends, it wasn't. God says in this verse, I desire steadfast love, not sacrifice. I desire knowledge of God over offerings. You see, we miss the point when we say that God's covenant was only about the sacrifices that Israel was to do. God's eternal covenant is about love and faithfulness to God. Ty Gibson, Pastor Ty, describes the covenant this way to help explain what was broken. He says, covenant is a relational word. To live covenantly is to live for others in faithful love. So covenant breaking occurs when individuals live for self to the hurt of others. Now, friends, let's be honest. That's deep. And that is broad. The covenant is bigger than just sacrifices and bigger than just ten laws. It goes beyond that to our love for God and for others. When we understand that the covenant in that light, when we compare it 
our lives then to God's covenant, we quickly realize that we have all broken God's covenant. But some things in this world are not easily fixed. They are not easily fixed when broken. So how would God fix this covenant that we broke? Well, remember last week, we learned that the story of the Bible is about searching for God's Son, someone who would come and fix the problem of sin and defeat the serpent. Now, we discover that this victory happens by someone restoring and living by God's covenant. That's what defeats the serpent. But sadly... As we learned last week, every son of God that's mentioned in the Old Testament failed to uphold the covenant. Why? Well, because they had one major problem. They were human, like like me and you. But the great thing about God, the great thing about God is He never gives up. I'm going to say that again. The great thing about God is He never gives up. Why don't you say it with me? I don't care if you're alone or you got people with you. Say it with me. The great thing about God is He never gives up. Friends, we got to remember that. Now, you and I, we may give up. You may give up on you. I may give up on me. We may give up on each other. But God doesn't give up. He had a plan to fix what was broken. God had a reboot planned all along. God knew all along that we would need this reboot to fix His broken covenant. So where Israel and David and Solomon and others failed to be God's son and to fulfill His covenant, God would bring a new actor onto the scene. And friends, I believe this idea helps us to see the connection from the story in the Old Testament to the New Testament and realize that they're telling the same story, but with a different actor in the new. You see, God was always faithful to His covenant. We as humans were not. Israel, who was called God's son, was not faithful. So God does the unthinkable. God, the Word, became the Son of God. Listen to John chapter 1, verse 14, a very famous verse. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word became human so He could be God's Son that we failed in being. Jesus Christ lived as a human to reboot human history. So, friends, let's notice how Jesus was faithful where humans were not. Now, Ty Gibson points out several parallels in his book, The Sonship of Christ. We're going to look at some of these. I know there are more. You can probably come up with them and find them as you're reading through the the Gospels and the Old Testament. But let's look at a few. In Genesis... One of the major characters there is Joseph who has dreams. He dreams dreams, and as a result, he ends up being sent to Egypt. And his family goes there to escape famine and death. Israel goes to Egypt. In the New Testament, we find another Joseph. Jesus' adopted dad is told by God in a dream, you got to leave, you got to move and go down to Egypt. Take the family down to Egypt. Take the boy down to Egypt in order to protect them. You see the parallel there. God calls Israel my son in Exodus 4, verse 22. Moses speaking says, then you shall say to Pharaoh, thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, my firstborn. But then you look at Matthew chapter 2, verse 15, speaking of when Jesus and his family were sent down to Egypt and says, and they were there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, out of Egypt, I called my son. Jesus doing in the New Testament what had been done in the Old, walking that path again, rebooting the story. 
Matthew connects the story of Israel as God's son to Jesus, God's son. Now Israel then passes through the Red Sea, goes into the wilderness for 40 years. In the New Testament, Jesus is baptized in water. And right after, God says in Matthew 3, verse 17, this is my son. And what happens to Jesus? Jesus goes into the wilderness. Can you see the reboot that God is doing here? Now, friends, Israel failed time and time again in the wilderness, but Jesus does not fail. He does not fall into sin when tempted by Satan in the wilderness. Jesus is victorious over the tempter. That's the reboot. It's different now. Another comparison, Moses receives the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai, receives them from God. And then later, Jesus gives his famous sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, saying that he had come to fulfill the law. Isn't it beautiful, friends, what we're seeing here? But I want you to see something, friends. My, my friends out there who love God's law, please do something for me. I want you to go and I want you to read Matthew 5, 6, and 7. I want you to reread the Sermon on the Mount. I know many of you have read it before. Read it again if you love God's law. Because I want you to see something. My fellow Christians, my fellow Seventh-day Adventists who long to be faithful to God's covenants and to God's commandments, please go and read those chapters again and notice how Jesus emphasizes the relational aspects of faithful living. Jesus expands the law in our minds to reveal that it affects how we live. Why? Because how we live affects others. And we need to remember that these days, don't we? And friends, the covenant is all about living in love toward God and towards others. That's what the covenant is all about. But friends, there's more. There's more comparison. Ancient Israel began with 12 imperfect sons of Jacob. And so Jesus began his ministry again with 12 imperfect men, 12 imperfect apostles. God called Israel a kingdom of priests with the purpose of spreading the word about God to every people group in the world. Listen to Exodus chapter 19, verse 6. God speaking says, And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. Israel was to be a kingdom of priests and to spread the news of God to the world. Well, look what happens in the New Testament. Jesus calls his church to be a royal priesthood in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. Why? Why are we a chosen generation? Why are we a royal priesthood? It tells us, so that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That is why we exist, to proclaim the praises of of God. And again, the, the mission is to take the message to the whole world. That's what it tells us in Revelation 14, verse 6, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people to spread God's love to others. Friends, can you see the connections between God's Son that He called Israel to be His Son and then to Jesus as God's Son? The story of Jesus in the Bible is God's reboot. Jesus came to be God's Son because we all failed to be. Not just Israel's failure, all of us failed to be God's son or daughter. So Jesus came to live faithfully to the covenant because we could not, we couldn't do it on our own. So many believers today, they don't want to spend time in the Old Testament choosing to only read the New Testament. But when we do that, we miss the point that they're telling the same story with different actors. All the promises God gave that could not be fulfilled by us failed humans are finally revealed and come true in the person and ministry of Jesus Christ.
Friends, finally, Jesus is the Son of God who is faithful to the covenant and able to defeat Satan. And friends, that is good news. That is amazing news. But my friends, it gets even better. Through Christ, we have a chance to be victorious and faithful too. God wants you and me to be part of the reboot, of this new reboot. God wants us to be a part of it. And through Christ, we, though undeserving, hear that point, friends, we are undeserving, but through Christ, we can have a good ending to this movie that we call life. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 tells us, verse 21, listen to me now. For since by man came death, by man, another man, by another man also came the resurrection of the dead. And verse 22, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Now, after we read that, Sounds amazing, but we should have two words that we say. First, we should say, wow, and then we should say, how, right? By our natural birth, we are all tied to Adam, a failed son of God. That's what the Bible teaches. But through a second, through a spiritual birth, we can connect to a second Adam, who is a victorious son of God, namely Jesus Christ. And this is what Jesus told Nicodemus so long ago, and he tells it to us today too. John chapter 3, verse 3, Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, maybe like Nicodemus, maybe like that Pharisee from long ago who first heard these words, maybe we wonder, how is this possible? How is it possible to be, to be born again by the Spirit? Well, the Bible tells us. Again, we go back to 1 Corinthians 15, and we look at verse 45. And it says, And so it is written, The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, and that's Jesus Christ, he became a life-giving spirit. You see, friends, Jesus will not only sever our connection with Adam, the first Adam that leads to failure and death. He can also build a connection between Himself and us, and He does it through the Spirit, making us born again so that we can lead a life of victory. That is good news. Praise God for Jesus, the Son. That's who we've been searching for. That's who we're all looking for on this planet. Have you found Jesus yet? Have you discovered Him as the Son? Now, my friends, I don't know if you have a favorite movie. I don't know what your favorite movie is, if you have one. But if you have a favorite movie that you've always noticed that it just had one major flaw in it, how would you feel if you found out it was being redone? You'd probably be excited to hear about a reboot, something to fix the flaw in your favorite movie. I think you'd be excited. I know I would. But I think our excitement would grow even more if we found out that we were going to be a part of the reboot. We were going to be a part of fixing our favorite story. Now, friends, if we heard that news, that we were going to be in a movie reboot, I think we'd be over the moon, wouldn't we? And we would probably tell everyone that we could think of. We'd be calling up our family and friends. We'd be posting on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Man, we'd probably even be stopping strangers on the street to tell them the news. We would tell everybody that we meet, I'm going to be in a reboot. Well, my friends, there has been a reboot of human history. Jesus, the Word, came to do the reboot of all reboots when He became the Son of God. He became the promised seed that we found in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. He is the human who was faithful to the covenant that we broke. 
And not only will He defeat sin and Satan for all time, but He invites us to be a part of the story too. He wants to give us His victory. This is news that needs sharing, friends. we got to tell somebody else. My friends, if you're waiting for this world to change for the better, you'll be waiting forever. And it's not going to happen. We're not going to change. Humans can't change. Not on our own. But this book, it tells us of a way to not only be changed ourselves, but to be able to live changed lives in this messed up world. We can be the change that this world needs. We can live lives of covenant faithfulness and love toward others. But only, only if we accept to be a part of the Son's story that He is rewriting. Friends, if you've never accepted the fact that you've failed, today's the day. Stop denying it. You've failed just like me. And if you've never taken the time to get to know the story of Jesus Christ as read in both the Old and New Testaments, today's the day. Take a look. I think you will love what you find when you search. Because you're going to discover that Jesus wants you to be a part of His reboot. But it's up to you, and it's up to me, to accept Christ's casting call and to be a part of the greatest story ever rebooted.
wonderful God. Lord, we need to hear that wonderful story of Jesus. We need to keep hearing it. We need to see our part in it. Lord, we need to know that this story is about how we can be saved, how we can be a part of Your reboot, Lord. Thank You so much for fixing what we broke. Thank You so much, Lord, for coming into our world and for becoming human so that You, Lord Jesus, could be the Son to fix what we broke, to reboot it all, and to make it so that we could be a part of Your story. And Lord, it's not just a story that we're part of today and tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. It's a story that You want us to be a part of for all eternity. So Jesus, we thank You and we praise You. Help us to accept Your call and be a part of Your story, part of Your amazing reboot. And all those who wanted to be a part of Jesus' story said, Amen. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Friends, stay safe, and we'll be seeing you soon. Take care.